Thank you for joining me today, February the 20th, 2020, it's Thursday, and, and we've been in a discussion about uh, the worship philosophy of the church, and we've talked about the focus being on the Lord Jesus Christ and honoring and glorifying Him. We've also been talking about how anybody that leads worship needs to be a worshiper in their lifestyle and need to be practicing the worship they're going to worship with. So I was stimulated to talk about this by my brother-in-law, Tim. He, he sent an article to me from stream.org, and so I'm giving you this. I'll repeat it, stream.org, January 19th, 2020. Stream.org, uh, article in the January 19th, 2020, and is written by Michael Brown, and it's What Happened to Upbeat Praise. The article is entitled What Happened to Upbeat Praise. And so... I'm, I'm going to probably refer to that in the next day or so in, in that article, but I don't have the article in front of me. <clears throat> but you can look it up and uh, read it for yourself, and maybe it'll stimulate some thought for you. I think uh, believers ought to be worshipers, and worshipers ought to be thinking about their worship. And that's why I'm using the scripture today from John 4, 24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and truth. Now, <clears throat> I want to put a premise, uh, a real basic premise in front of us today. Whether you worship or participate in worship according to what the entire assembly that you're with is doing is not a measure of your worship. So in other words, if everybody's singing but you're not singing, that doesn't mean you're not worshiping. The true measure of your and my worship is before God. Is my worship in spirit and in truth? <clears throat> so are we doing our praise, our singing, our speaking, our silence in spirit and truth? Is it authentic flowing from my heart? Is it the best I have to offer today? Is my spirit engaged? Does God have my undivided attention? Is my worship biblically sound in doctrine that is truth? And is my heart and soul and all my emotion in this thing, spirit? So I think that's, that's really, really important, partly because of how churches are doing worship today without paying much attention to this, and, and partly because you know, across the board, across the nomination, we've been doing cookie-cutter worship in America. Now, I, I attended a lot of Catholic services and, and had a lot of great friends in the Catholic Church. And one day, while I was pastoring in, in South Dakota, I, I was on vacation and I went to one of the very large Catholic churches in our community. And, and I was surprised to find them singing the same songs in that Catholic church that we sang in ours. And they had a pianist, a guitarist, and three vocalists almost the same that we were doing in our Pentecostal church. But what happens today is that you have the latest CD, DVD, the top 25 gospel songs on Christian radio, and those are the songs that are being sung in churches. <clears throat> and I, I believe there's definitely room for genuine worship that crosses congregational and denominational lines and focuses on God and not us. I really believe there's room for that. And I think some of those those songs that are, are being sung in praise to God are excellent. But if they are good, and I mean they are good, they, they must be assisting us in worshiping God, singing to God in spirit and in truth. In other words, they engage my emotion, they engage my soul, my mind, but they also are biblically sound and reflect correct teaching of the scripture. Too many times while I'm singing a song that I've heard on the radio or I've got a CD of or I've, I've purchased a, a DVD of, I realize the lyrics, they're not lining up with the theology of Scripture. And I'm going to bring up a song which may offend some of you, but that's all right because I know I'm telling the truth. A classic song being sung today in multiple denominations, thousands of churches, is a song that, that says that God's love is reckless. I love the song, except for that word. 
which is the opposite of the God of the Bible. So that now I even find it very hard to sing that song at all. Reckless love is not the love of God at all. Do you know what the word reckless means? It means wild, irresponsible, thoughtless, uncontrolled, hasty, inattentive, careless, and rash. Is that the love of God you know from scriptures? If it is, it isn't the God of the Bible that I have. In fact, it's the opposite of the God of the entire scriptures. Yet we are moved by our love for the melody, the crescendos of the fact that we've heard it played on every Christian radio station, and we've never thought about the lyrics. So much worship today is me-centered and not God-centered. And I know I'm like a voice crying in the wilderness. <laughs> and people may think, well, that's just being too critical. Just shut up, man, and go with the flow. But I can't. And I just, I can't fathom how so many lead pastors won't insist that all the worship in their assembled gatherings isn't dedicated to the furtherance of the gospel by only including sound doctrine. Now, I've had this discussion with a number of young disciples and found it refreshing how it's challenged them to, to look for worship that's centered on Scripture and the principles, principles therein and the honoring and glorifying of God. Uh, I was privileged to pastor the same church for over 28 years, and, and, and I had a, a worship pastor in our church, one of our pastors on staff, who was a gifted songwriter. And he, he was right in tune with where I was at. And I, I, I did a lot of series preaching and, and I would, the whole staff would know where I was going with the series and I would invite their uh, input into those series of messages. And, and Pastor Jerry would almost without fail write a, a brand new song for that series that was tied to our congregation, to the series of, of sermons that I was going to be sharing as the lead pastor. And I, I'm going to tell you what a blessing it was that we were in, excuse my expression, cahoots. We were working together and praying that the Spirit of God would lead us. And Jerry would be inspired by God to write a song that would apply to that series. Uh, this rings true with the Old Testament with Israel. David and others in the Psalms give us that authentic worship covering every aspect of the journey of the Israelites. The, the reflective part, the joyous part, the broken part, the triumphant part, the accessory part, the discouraged looking to God for hope part, and the intervention of God that they long for. And, and one of, in other words, what I'm saying to all of us is, is that all of our worship ha it ought to include all the things that we're experiencing in life as it brings glory to God, saying that we may be describing a testimonial of what's happening in our life, but we're saying, God, we're looking to you right now. We're longing to have your intervention in our life. You may say, well, Les, that's well and good, but how do I play any part in it if I'm not in leadership? I really don't have much to say. Yes, you do. First of all, you have a lot to say in prayer. <laughs> You can be praying that your the worship leader in your church, paid or unpaid, full-time, part-time staff, whatever they might be, that they're at, at the throne room of God and seeking God. And they're they're in touch with the lead pastor if they're if the lead pastor is not himself or herself, the worship leader, <clears throat> or leading the worship in the in the assembled gathering. You can be praying the anointing of God, that they'll hunger and thirst for righteousness and they'll be seeking the throne of God. And then if you have a good relationship with them, and I say that because, man, we don't want to be attacking leaders, but if you have a good relationship with them, and there's a song that you guys sing regularly in your assembled group that it, the lyrics just don't match sound doctrine, now you owe it to them to go and talk to them about it, saying, you know, I'm just concerned, and I, I love you, and I've been praying every day for you, and this, this song we've been singing, man, it doesn't seem to line up with the scripture at all. Could you help me? With that, help me understand it. Maybe I'm missing something here. And then I'll tell you the other thing. You, you don't have to be in leadership to be a worshiper. <laughs> Just begin to glorify God and be a worshiper every day of your life. Oh, Father, you're so good. You're awesome. I love you.
be blessed by my life today and by the lives of those who watch this video devotional for the glory of God. Amen. Be blessed. It's a good day to be alive for the glory of God.